Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Ganesh Housing Corporation Limited Q2 FY25 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajat Gupta from Go India Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dev. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ganesh Housing Corporation Limited earnings call to discuss the Q2 FY25 results. We have on the call with us today Mr. Rajinder Shah, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Neeraj Kalavatiya, Vice President Finance, and Mr. B. Ravi, Corporate and Financial Advisor. Uh, we must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. I now request Mr. B. Ravi to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we'll open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rajat. Good noon, uh, ladies and gentlemen on the call. It's a pleasure to welcome you all once again to the earnings call of Ganesh Housing, both for Q2 FY25 and H1 FY25. I'm sure you would have had a chance to go through the presentation, uh, which was uploaded a couple of days back. I'm excited to share that this first half of FY25 has been one of the best periods in terms of performance for Ganesh Housing. We have been consistently building on the strong momentum of the past quarters, and based on that, H125 has surpassed all previous uh, quarters and H1, delivering the best robust results that reflect the strength of our strategy and execution. India real estate sector, to talk about it in the beginning, saw a robust performance in Q3 2024, that is this calendar, with institutional investments totaling to around 1.1 billion US dollars, which is a 45% YOY. This brought the total investment into the real estate sector for the first nine months of this calendar, 2024, to about 4.7 billion, which is almost the entire last year's performance, last year's investments. Growth was driven by private equity partnerships, particularly in premium residential in projects. Investor confidence remains high due to the expectations of interest rate cuts, which though, of course, has just been put on hold a couple of days back, but there is an expectation the next uh, two quarters. And also stable macroeconomic conditions and increased demand for high-end properties. In Ahmedabad, too, we have uh, witnessed this kind of a growth. The residential sales grew by about 11% YOY with around 4,600 units sold. The new project launches, launches did fall, but the demand for 3 BHK, which is a little higher than the mid-segment, actually remained very strong, and that accounted for 56% of the market. While homes priced between 4,000 to 6,000 per square feet saw the highest demand. Notably, premium housing units about 1 crore rupees saw a 41% increase, reflecting the growing interest in larger luxury spaces. Even on the commercial side, we saw very good momentum. In fact, recently there was a deal uh, in Ahmedabad which was one of the highest ever in terms of per the land transaction per term, in terms of the price per square meter. A land was sold by Andhavar Mitsubishi Corporation around the same place where we are trying to build up a new next commercial venture at a staggering 3.07 lakhs per square meter, which is the highest ever seen. In line with market momentum, Ganesh Housing is making notable contributions to the real estate sector's growth. We completed the Malabar Exotica project, as you know, well ahead of schedule, which resulted in substantial revenue recognition in Q4, but that continued to support the strong performance in H1, FY25 also. The process of executing sale date is currently 
underway and is expected to be completed this quarter, further strengthening the revenue visibility. The Malabar retreat project, launched in Q4 of FY24, has received the expected strong response from the market. With 12% of the construction already completed, the project is doing very well in terms of booking. The pre-sale revenue is about 100 crores in that project as of now. Typically, demand for premium uh, apartments increases once there is a sample house built and when the construction reaches for the first few floors when there is a visibility. Therefore, we do expect significant rise in bookings during the second half of this financial year. Our commercial venture, the Million Mines SZ project, is progressing well ahead of schedule, with phase one on track for completion. We have already initiated the marketing efforts targeting large IT companies, which began as planned. We should see some uh, growth and some developments in the coming half year on that. The early response has been strong, and we are confident that this should be one of our most successful projects. In fact, the kind of developer which is coming up, both in terms of the square feet and the type, will be better than what we had actually earlier planned. The one Thalthage commercial project is currently in the final stages of approvals, with plans expected to be submitted to authorities soon. Spanning a saleable area of 1.8 million square feet, this project is set to generate estimated revenues of about 2,100 crores, and we expect the construction construction to start in the next three to five months. We are constantly searching for new development opportunities in and around the areas of our land bank and could come up with more news in the coming months. Overall, Ganesh Housing is poised to capitalize on a wide range of growth opportunities in Andhavar's real estate market. The ongoing projects such as Million Mines, Malabar Retreat, the Godavi Township, and the One Kaltesh Commercial Venture are all strategically aligned with the city's growing demand for both residential and commercial spaces. Each project is advancing at a steady pace with already several already seeing strong uh, market response, particularly in the premium segment. Now for the financial highlights for Q2 and H1 and H25. It's very heartening that in, F in Q2 FY25, we have delivered a stellar performance with a revenue of 250 crores, which is a significant 52% year on year. Our EBITDA has reached 215 crores, representing a 76% growth year on year. With an outstanding EBITDA margin at 86%, up by 15.6 percentage points from the previous quarter. This highlights the company's ability to optimize cost and drive profitability. Our profit after tax saw an impressive rise to 159 crores, which is up 84% year on year. This resulted in a healthy PAT margin of 63.5%, up 11.1% year on year. Even in the half year, First half year FY25, we have achieved total revenues of 470 crores, which is an 8% YOY. EBITDA stands at 371 crores, which is a 9% increase YOY. EBITDA margins are maintained at 78.8%. The PAT for the first half year reached 272 crores, which is a 10% YOY further supported by strong margins and operational efficiency. Our PAT for six months is almost 60% of the PAT for the full year FY24, justifying our expectation, expected and projected growth in the bottom line by around 30% year on year. This exceptional performance across all key metrics demonstrates our capacity to maintain strong margins and growth momentum while efficiently managing operations and capital. Despite significant capital expenditure, as you can see all over, we have maintained very strong financial, number, financial numbers in terms of cash flows. With zero debt, our cash balances, cash and mine balances as of 30th September 24, 
stands at around 250 crores, which around which was around 220 in FY 24 March. And this is further trending, going to be trending in the months to come. Looking ahead, our focus remains on delivering high-value developments with a clear roadmap for the next five to seven years that ensures that we are well prepared to tap into any future marketing dynamics. By leveraging our land bank and focusing on mid to high end residential and commercial segments, we are confident that these will create substantial value for all the stakeholders while enhancing Ahmedabad's real estate landscape. With this, I would request the floor to be open for questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rishit Shaha from Nuama Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a great set of results again. Uh, so, the question, I had uh, three questions really. So, first question was actually around the competition and the land prices. So, you highlighted that there was a record-breaking deal that happened in this quarter uh, in Rajpath area. So, that uh, basically, and uh, that is more so as per reports for the commercial uh, development. And secondly, we recently also saw a press release from one of the larger Pan India competitors that they are uh, adding land parcels in uh, Ahmedabad. So, just wanted to understand how this uh, record breaking land prices as well as new entrants coming into the market will affect the land prices as well as the competition and the overall landscape in Ahmedabad. Uh, would you want to give, uh, ask all the three questions and we can take them together or you want one by one? Yes, so yeah, so that was the first question. I'll ask all the three questions together. So, the yeah, second yeah. part was on the uh, uh, cost that we see. So, again, uh, impacting from the same increase in uh, launches or increase in construction activity, do we foresee the labor prices being impacted? And thirdly, uh, and the question that I ask usually is the split between the revenue in terms of the land sale and project sales. And sure. Lastly, fourth question, one more question if I, if I can add. Uh, regarding the Million Minds IT project, ITSZ project, so uh, the marketing efforts that are ongoing, can you elaborate a little bit on it? Maybe how is it, I mean, placed? Are we looking for an outright sale right now or people are leasing on the property? That's it. Thank you. Sure. Okay. I'll I'll take uh, right from the beginning and the, all the four sessions. The competition, the line price, what is it's a very uh, important question. Uh, but you know that this kind of a competition or the increase in the land prices and more and more people being interested in the land uh, in Ahmedabad actually will lead to the land prices increase, which actually affects positively for Ganesh housing. Why I'm saying that is that we have had uh, land banks at various areas in Ahmedabad at most strategic places, which are of very historical cost, very low cost historically. And therefore, any such kind of a, a increase in price which a competitor will have because they're buying the land now, will drive up their prices, ultimate sale price of the projects completed, which, have, which will have a project imp uh, the perfect impact on Ganesh housing because their land price being the same, we will still be, uh, even on the final price, will still be much cheaper, if at all, if we choose to be, or we'll earn much more than a competitor can uh, give in terms of the ultimate sale prices. So, therefore, these things uh, do help Ganesh Housing because of the large land bank, they already are switched on. That's one. Even for the new ones, you know, wherever any such kind of land deals do happen, any new projects, Prices will be determined as per the demand, and we will also, even if we purchase on that, it will be driven through the similar kind of a demand and supply situation. 
there the positive for ganesh is that we are uh, in the brand of uh, recall uh, uh, absolutely on the top in in andhrabad therefore our kind of prices normally have always had a premium to the general prices which are available in the market also because the kind of a premium construction and the facilities that we have been given so we we do believe that with this kind of a good development i would call it in andhrabad real estate sector uh, ganesh housing is quite well placed to capitalize on both their brand as well as their land bank that's one yeah you want uh, rajesh and bhai will like uh apart from this uh, uh, we can leverage our, uh, our unutilized capacity we can do we can go for jvs and uh, such uh, partnerships for development if uh, pan india players come comes to comes to andhavar meaning our uh, one can imagine what can happen to irr of our project because investment generally is made by some uh, uh, no, uh, pan, pan india player wherever uh, where they will require a local support to secure approvals and carry on with construction on the cost side yes they can be uh, the labor costs and all have be have increased as you know both the input costs had increased a year and a half back and, and they are only really following the normal uh, inflation we don't see uh, too much of uh, upheavals in the labor costs at this point in time the split between land and uh, projects is 90 10 uh, uh in favor of land that is and as you know we are uh, following the uh, completion method and therefore we are only able to book the projects once they are completed the new ones which are already started the million miles marketing efforts the the way the whole thing has been growing and people have actually on their own there are various interested parties i'm unable to take the name at this point in time at least in december by which time we'll be actually finalizing everything with just a couple of months from now we have seen extremely good interest in the entire uh, you know the building there are about 12 floors which are supposed to be let out or even sold and we have seen an interest in all the 12, 12 floors as we stand at this point in time and we will see whether we need to uh, continue to lease the way we have mod- modeled ourselves uh, in the earlier stages or we need to sell it off that will depend on some economics that will work out i'm unable to say whether it will only follow the sale model or only follow the lease model at this point in time but those aspects would be addressed in the coming one or two months maximum i hope i have answered all your four questions i need yeah you want to add something yeah please see on on availability of labor and increase in uh, labor cost we have actually deployed a technology which is uh, we, we are go- going for pre cast uh, meaning pre cast slabs vertical and uh, horizontal which will require um, meaning our dependence on labor is uh, reduced drastically because of that very good content sir uh, thank you so much for the detailed reply just one follow up if i may so in terms of uh, so i understand that the market will be most structured as and when the pan india players come into the market and we may also explore some uh, joint development opportunities but in terms yes. of supply will it potentially i mean do you see the supply being potentially impacted or exceeding the demand in any case in the near term let's see uh, the normally the kind of interest which happens from uh, by various players is only when they see a huge demand coming up in the month years to come and therefore uh, the very fact that such kind of prices are come uh, there and people are coming getting interested necessarily means that there are good growth opportunities and good demand coming uh, are coming up in the years to come and therefore i don't think that will have uh, any such kind of a oversupply issue that is a question on the other hand i would like to say that there could be a supply in certain pockets where you know whenever there is an over uh, supply then yes the demand drop there could be an over supply but not in the areas where we are operating whether it is the kind of a commercial building that we are setting it up in the sz or the kind of uh, the uh, you know the premium housing that we are setting up in all these areas we don't see any such kind of a over supply situation coming up in the near future 
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the detailed reply. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Isha Shah from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. First of all, congratulations on excellent numbers. Uh, I basically have two questions. Um, as for Malabar retreat, I see that the construction completion is 12% this quarter, which is just up by 2% from the past quarter. So, there, is there a reason for the lag and uh, what is the expected timeline for the project? And uh, the second question is uh, for the Ahmedabad market. Uh, we've seen a good price increase, I think, uh, as we've already said in land, but as well as the overall realization level. Do we see the same kind of uh, price hikes in the coming years or do we see them stabilizing now going forward? Say in terms of Malabar retreat, you see the last quarter has been largely dominated because of the rainy season. And largely we were, uh, the most of the construction activity was happening for the basement. And you are well aware that the basement activity remained highly impacted because of the whenever there is a heavy rainfall. So, mo most of the period you see the last quarter has been uh, rainfall in Ahmedabad uh, and this year it has been comparatively uh, the best, one of the best years for the rainfall in Ahmedabad. Largely, it does not happen during even during the rainy season. So, because of that, the construction activity has been impacted uh, to a certain extent. But our schedule for the project is uh, well uh, in terms of timeline which we have scheduled on somewhere near around March 27th. Okay. Okay. Trisha, what happens yeah. is that initial, this was, as you know, launched in uh, March, uh, and almost towards the end of March. The last quarter was uh, April, May, June, where the maximum effort and maximum time goes in doing the foundation, the base spend and all that. Once that is done, when, the, when it comes to the ground level, you know, Putting up the next a few floors and all is not actually a very difficult task, which is what, when we talk to you again for December, you will see a substantial progress in that. Okay, okay. And there was substantial progress in terms of uh, uh, cost being spent in that project. However, construction milestone is one with which we measure the progress of project, and that's why you will see it is it is 2%. And uh, you're talking about the price hike and all that in the future to come. I think uh, we have projected our future one at the current prices, but you're right. We, whenever uh, these kind of uh, changes do happen, uh, the prices are driven by, uh, you know, slightly increases do happen. There may not be a sudden spike and all, unless, of course, it's a very good project like what we are doing with uh, SZ. That kind of prices may be not comparable with the rest of the people in the in the vicinity, you know. But that, that's one exception. But generally, uh, this price hikes and all that happens uh, periodically, and especially when for good new premium projects, uh, the prices can be quite different from the general projects. Just, just to add to what Ravi uh, just said, I was talking to some experts in real estate. According to them, uh, prices per square feet in Ahmedabad is one of the most affordable as if you compare any tier 2 city or some metro cities. Exactly. So, there, there is a meaning, there is still a lot of scope to for price to increase without affecting affordability. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. My first question is, your, on your Million Minds project, you're targeting rental of almost 70 rupees. Uh, I mean, is there a discussion that you're seeing on, the, on, on those rentals with your prospective tenants and in any timeline for pre-leasing there? Yeah, the timeline I'll tell you, we, as I just said, uh, we shall be work, uh, talking about it uh, maybe in the next two, three months itself. There will be a lot of development in this, which we can very concretely tell you when we talk about Q3 results. So, because there's a lot of work going on in that direction, both on the prices that you talked about, 70 per, rupees per lease uh, for the rental charges, as well as any uh, outright sale, a lot of uh, traction is there in that, I would call it at this point in time. So interest being there, we are quite uh, sure 
that's a pre-leasing what you're saying because the project is likely to be completed in FY the first quarter, early first quarter FY26, which is just about five months from now, five to six months. So we do see that the pre-lease uh, activities would happen in the next three months uh, or maybe five months at the, at the maximum because we'll have to be giving them out for fit outs and all that in the first quarter of FY26, right? So we do believe that uh, these whatever development we are seeing on ground right now will be leading to good uh, traction in this in the coming months. And coming back to 70 rupees per square feet, what you said, we believe this is this is maintainable and sustainable rent, and uh, we are uh, kind of stand by this. These are in fact the current prevailing uh, rental rate for a regular commercial property. So we are not charging any premium for the kind of the property we are making right now in terms of our provisioning. Okay. And similarly, on the construction cost side, the implied construction cost seems to be less than 3,500 rupees a square feet. What is driving this this low cost? I mean, market seems to be at a much higher rate, at least in other cities. Yeah, see, uh, it, it is a basic cost that we had been talking about. It, it might uh, uh, change if there is a premium that's added to the building. So, frankly, uh, market to market, these kind of differences can be there. Uh, here is, this is what we had estimated based on a particular plan about a year and a half back. We are looking at the entire aspect of how the whole building is coming up, how the, we have added actually much more in terms of the square feet to this as we see, as well as the premiumness to that. So we will, uh, come back to you on this, uh, actual, actual cost and all that maybe in the next six months. But we do believe that the basic cost could be well around this uh, time, at this cost, what you mentioned. That's not uh, very different from what we normally have for such kind of projects here. Understood. That's different. Uh, secondly, you also talked about potentially buying more land, even though you have 500 acres. How do you think about your land on business development strategy here? Well, uh, it is uh, raw material. Land has to be is there in order to be continuing development uh, projects right in the future. So that that being our raw material, we would want to uh, continue to acquire because then the future project should not get affected. We cannot wait for. Uh, uh, normally, we have been developing on our own land, right? But we're not just doing immediate buying and selling. That's the reason why we try to accumulate. More importantly, the land buying has to happen in the areas where we believe the future city development happens and where there will be a growth potential. As uh, Just to tell you in 30 seconds, the growth in Ahmedabad has been shifting westwards and northwards as we always keep saying. So earlier everything which was happening in the walled city then transferred to the, this part of it is called the Ashram Road. Uh, or that is this western part of the river, then it shifted to uh, CG Road, then it shifted to NC Highway, then it's gone to uh, the Ring Road, and it's now going beyond. So, keeping in view the kind of development which happens in the city, uh, the promoters being the forefront, forefront uh, in the forefront of trying to, uh, you know, take advantage of this kind of development, will always keep looking at the land uh, which is available in, in, in the, around the areas. So, that will be a continuous exercise which uh, will happen. Obviously, it will be keeping in view the prices versus the potential increases which will happen, plus the potential development that then happens in the areas. And of the 500 acres, how much land would you have on the northern and the western part? At this point in time, almost 100%. There's hardly on the other side. So these are all the development which is happening now, both on the as well as the west, it's not exactly not this west, not west. Uh, that is that uh, million miles area. You know? That's where all the even Adani township is there, a little close by, and various other. It's a new CBD. So that's where this entire 65 acres is coming up, and the west part, most part of it, is where the Godavi land is there. There are a lot of other tractions happening, as we told in the last quarter results also. There's a lot of development happening in that west part of it, with a lot of value acquisition for future growth. So we do have land at the places where it is just right for us to be at this point in time, having acquired it 10, 15 years back. Understood. And, and lastly, if I may, any challenges you're facing on approvals front or availability of contractors, etc.? 
That's one good, very good point of Ahmedabad, frankly, and Gujarat, and that is these approvals and, uh, you know, both on the contractor side, there's nothing which we have been doing it seamlessly for so many years, year on year, day on day, and we don't see any such problems. And even on the approval side, probably one of the most pro uh, progressive states, if you can call, in terms of understanding the growth and giving approvals is Gujarat. I have worked in uh, in Mumbai for almost like 25 years. My experience of working in Gujarat and Mumbai, if I were to mention in two lines, here we know in Andhavad uh, that these, these are the kind of things which will not, just not happen in the government. So you better make plan which is approvable by government and then you, you will not have any problem. There are a lot of uh, flexibilities and uh, loopholes or so to, a, so to say workarounds which are available in Mumbai, which is not the case in Mumbai. Understood. That's very, very helpful. Thank you so much in all the ways. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Satyam Badera from Profimat Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, congratulations on good set of members. Thank I have you. a question on IT SSS. Can you please provide an update on the market response for SSS phase one so far? And uh, along with uh, is uh, how far we are in progress in construction process? The progress is uh, have that. We, uh, yeah, yeah. Have we initiated, initiated a discussion with Ishman regarding the marketing strategies of this project? Additionally, oh, yes. can, can you outline any other phase of the ITS that, that we are planning in current financial year? Uh, to answer the last question, if you have finished, uh, you have any more questions, I'll take them all. No, I have one more question. I have yes. one more question. Uh, what is the approximate inventory we are currently holding on the ongoing project? A total inventory of all the projects and uh, can you even uh, share of the Malabar retreat? Okay, I'll I'll just uh, uh, we'll take that uh, later. Let me finish all the other questions. Now, okay. uh, as of today, the progress what you asked about is SZ is very well, uh, almost like a year ahead of schedule, if we can say so. And therefore, we are expected to complete that and hand it over uh, for fit outs and all that in the in Q1 FY26. That means in April to June of FY, uh, next year. That is F, F, uh, April, May, June. 25. Now, this is where we see, uh, which is almost like in 10, 12 months or more, uh, well ahead of it. So, it is progressing well. At this point in time, uh, the, uh, uh, the roof and various activities are going on full strength. The, uh, the discussion with Tishman in terms of the lease, yes, it's an ongoing process. We have had at least two rounds, and there is a full fledged, uh, uh, you know, the discussion happening even as we speak around the same day. And therefore, uh, we that's why we said, I just told a couple of uh, minutes back that we see a very good traction, very good uh, interest in this kind of a development. We can be, I mean, I dare say, and I have, I'm telling it this as a completely outsider, uh, that this will become one of the top, com uh, top buildings of India, leave alone Ahmedabad. That's the way it is going. And therefore, we very strongly believe that the kind of interest which has been generated now and which will probably keep getting generated, will not just uh, completely lease this out in the shortest period of time, but also enthuse us to go towards the second phase, which we have not yet started. We were planning to start the second phase. We are not going to do that in this, uh, in this financial year, because you asked that question, it's not going to be in FY25. But looking at this action, we may say that we may have to uh, uh, constantly plan as projected, we said, you know, we will be doing that in our uh, earlier projection we are told. I think even that uh, should start on schedule, even maybe well ahead of schedule, looking to the kind of traction that we are seeing right now. So phase two might well begin uh, uh, soon. We don't know. Let's, let's finish this. Uh, in the next three to four months, we should see a lot of uh, traction in this. Once we do that, we will talk about phase two. Too. Coming to inventory, yeah. what we have in hand, so we have roughly about 30,000 square feet of office space, which is available for sale uh, in Maple Tree and Maple Trade Center project. And there are few residential units which are available, like uh, six units which are available in uh, 
मलाबार एक्सोटिका प्रोजेक्ट टू बी सोल्ड हावेवर मीनिंग एवरीथिंग एल्स इज बुक बट देर आर सम सम कस्टमर्स वो हैव नॉट कम फॉरवर्ड फॉर डूइंग देयर फाइनल एग्रीमेंट्स व्हिच इज अबाउट 10 टू 12 ऑफ देम वंस दे डू फाइनल एग्रीमेंट विद अस इवन दैट इन्वेंटरी विल गो अप other than that there is there is hardly any inventory which is there of uh, any completed projects okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is in the line of shita loda from swan investment managers please go ahead um hi sir congratulations for a great quarter um, thank you Shita, you will have to be a little louder, please. Okay. Uh, am I? Is it better now? Yeah, a uh, little better. So, uh, as per the previous participant's question, uh, I understand that 90% of the sales were land sales. So, is it possible to share the area of the land which was sold in this quarter? Yeah, it's about uh, 23 acres. Okay. And um, in the in the investor presentation, uh, in slide number twenty, I see that there is a target mentioned uh, that the company wants to develop thirty three million square feet in the next few years, having a total uh, pre sales value of seventeen thousand five hundred crores. Correct. And then, yes. um, if I come to slide number eight. um i see that uh, the ongoing and uh, planned projects uh, both uh, uh, the same quantum so uh, i have the confusion here because i understand that the commercial and the township projects are on uh, lease basis so does this pre sales value uh, is it just residential uh, or does it include the commercial and how how does it uh, Say for the ease of the calculation, we have considered the capitalized value of the lease asset also on a standard uh, capex rate, which will give us the overall potential uh, capital value of the total development, which will take place in around next seven to ten years. Okay, so uh, uh, is it possible to share the rate capitalization rate that we take? Because that is around seven percent. Seven to eight percent. Seven to eight percent. Okay. And uh, in this 33 million square feet, how much is residential, how much is commercial, and how much is the township? Oh. See, out of the 30 million, there are around around 15.3 million is the SEZ, both processing and non-processing area, where largely uh, you have a processing and non-processing in the ratio of 50 is to 50. Then we have around 15.3 uh, million square feet of development, which has been uh, targeted for the township. Which is largely the residential development. Then there is a 1.8 million of the development is targeted for that one surface project, which is will be a pure commercial project. Okay, so this is mean. So the township is the residential one. Yes, yes, largely. So uh, in meaning overall, if one wants to see about 25 percent of the development will be commercial and 75 will be residential. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Kumar from Alpha Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for taking my question and congrats for a very good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I want I wanted to ask regarding guidance. In the last call, we we talked about 30 to 35 percent of growth in bottom line. So, given one edge is strong, how do we still stick to it, or how how should we look at second half on that front, sir? I think uh, looking to the performance, sixty uh, percent of last year's already achieved right now, uh, and second quarter has generally been a little better than first quarter, even last year if you have seen. So, I think we are well on course to achieve that thirty percent uh, growth uh, year on year. Got it, sir. And sir, you said ninety percent of sales is land sales and and twenty three acres. So how much can we expect in second half, and how much is the total total land bank that we will will be selling in say next one to two years? Oh, that has not been. What what will be the amount of sales in the next one two years? That is not really quantifiable right now because we see an opportunity whether it is better to sell or whether better to hold. 
That's that's what drives it. And therefore, it's difficult to say that at this point in time. But the next half year, uh, I think the pattern of uh, the land sale versus college sale could be the same as the first half year. Got it. So, and sir, in in the PPT, we are saying this nine month uh, land prices have st- stopped going up in in Ahmedabad region. Is that a right estimate? I think in in the slide number seven, we talked about INR per square feet. That kind of has stabilized in nine M twenty four versus CY twenty three. So, how should we look at uh, in in going forward? Really, that is yeah, actually yeah. not uh, stabilized. If you see, you know, on an year-on-year, it is around somewhere around eight percent of the growth in terms of the pricing. So the price, as such, is, you know, going upward year-on-year. Got it. So, and we expect this trend to grow to continue on in this line. Ah, oh yeah, yes, yeah. The trend is showing that way. Only. Trend is very strong. Got it, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Jain from RK Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, congrats on an extremely good set of numbers. Thank you. Uh, I was going through your presentation, and you have uh, projected the sale value of around. Uh, 17,500 CR cumulative till uh, FY34 uh, over the next uh, eight to ten years. So uh, I just wanted some clarification. Like uh, this projected sale value is at the current rate uh, of you know the the land and the uh, and the constructed flats, or yes. uh, have you factored in the increase in prices also over the years? Current 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 rate. Okay, great. So, uh, so then you know, uh, uh, keeping in mind the future acquisition that is uh, uh, that is inevitable. So, can the company grow at a CAGR of 24-25% over the next, uh, I mean, almost 10 years? So, Rajesh, one correction: all these 17,500 crores, what we are we are saying we will achieve, is going to happen on land which is already acquired and paid for. Right. So it is only question of whether there can be any increase in construction cost. Yes, there there may be any increase in co- construction cost. Again, there will be matching increase uh, increase in matcher, matching matching or higher increase in sale prices. We we believe that uh, we will be able to maintain this uh, um, 25 to 30 percent growth year on year, which is sustainable. For almost a decade, uh, for almost eight to ten years, I mean, uh, uh, these numbers uh, work out to almost uh, that rate for uh, eight to ten years, right? Yes. See, the the, the way the land prices are uh, going, as we just discussed for the last forty minutes, we do believe that our historical land prices would be able to we will be able to sell it at increased rates as we go by, and therefore uh, sustaining this twenty twenty five percent CAGR. Uh, looks to be uh, definitely done. Now, this is where we see at this point in time, looking to all the parameters which are available for our consumption. And I'm sure nothing wrong is going to happen, nothing wrong is going to happen in the years to come and we are planning for one trillion economy and all that and a very stable uh, government, both in the center and the state. So, all this gives us the confidence that we, we can achieve that. And rest is, of course, leave it to the Almighty. Yes, sir. So, um, so now, like uh, uh, as investors, we have the visibility for the current year and we have the visibility for the long term, eight to ten years. But what I'm lacking is the visibility for FY26 in terms of your reported numbers because of the way the accounting is done for uh, for your business, uh, for your industry. Like, uh, how much revenue uh, do you think uh, you can report next year? So this year will be a through. I, I mean. Uh, 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 it is a done deal that you will be doing 30-35% growth. Uh, what about the next year in terms of reported numbers? See, uh, th- there are various projects which we have planned uh, for the next year also. And that is including the kind of uh, the, the, the Godavi Township project. Now, the revenues from that 
is such that it will be a completed project. So whatever we do in Godavi will actually go to the top line and bottom line in the same year as and when we start monetizing that land parcel. And therefore, that project will continue to uh, add to the top line. So we believe that the kind of development which is happening in and around the Godavi township area, which will lead to good sales in township for the next year, which will ensure the kind of uh, revenue which will happen. Now, this, this situation has been the same for the last couple of years, wherein we have maintained our revenue and profitability in spite of having a lesser project, uh, project on hand. But the project of Godavi, which will be starting next year, is a pure project sales which will happen in FY26 itself. And that's the reason we believe that the projection that we are given can be maintained. So, so even in FY26, you are saying that there will be a good growth uh, over FY25 days. In yes. terms of reported numbers. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, that's very good. And sir, just one request. Uh, if you can start publishing uh, or, or even during the phone call, if you can, you know, uh, uh, give out your uh, booking number or collection numbers or the numbers which have not yet flown to your reported numbers. That uh, I, in my speech, let me just, uh, the, the one which we had given uh, for retreat. Uh, we have this pre-sales of 100 crores, uh, which I just mentioned. So, yes, we'll continue to give that kind of a numbers quarter and quarter. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rutul Shaha from Advisor. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I was actually listening to your last quarter's presentation in which uh, we have given the slide for the upcoming residential project and the uh, commercial project. But uh, we have discontinued that uh, in the current quarter's presentation. So, just wanted to know that uh, why we have followed this uh, practice from current quarter. Is there any uh, change yeah. that we are looking into? No, no, no. See, the, what happened, we have been giving it all these while, right? Uh, I mean, it was so repeated and it was just increasing it. Uh, that's like that. There's no particular reason. I think, you know, the better thing would be that once this, uh, this quarter Q3 is also done, when we are planning for the next year, we'll bring that back in terms of the timelines and all that, in that updated stuff. We just were waiting for, uh, you know, the phase one to be getting over and all that. There's nothing in particular. I think we'll soon get it back in the in a quarter or two with an updated uh, uh, timelines uh, and also price because when we see a good traction, we might have to revise that also. So we're just waiting for that. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, so second was one bookkeeping question. So uh, currently in six months period, if we see uh, our sales is around 450 crores and corresponding sales uh, last year six months was around 435 crores. Uh, but uh, the trade receivables uh, currently as on September are 300 crores, which in the last September were hardly 30 crores. So why is this uh, huge bump in trade receivables uh, as on September 21st? The trade receivables uh, follow the uh, sales and uh, and some land, it is always a timing difference, you know, right? when, when something, some land which might have been sold, let's say, early quarter of the quarter, the funds might have come in, and sometimes the sales happen towards the later part of the quarter, wherein the funds are yet to come in, only certain parts of the fund, uh, funds are coming. But overall, if you see that uh, it is following the same pattern as it has been year to year also. So that is the only difference, I would say. There's nothing uh, uh, much uh, to read into it. Okay, okay, got it. And sir, another question. So you just mentioned that this quarter we sold around 23 acres of land. Uh, yes. And in another quarter we have, uh, uh, I mean, you have uh, conveyed that it is an ongoing process to sell and buy the uh, land because it is a raw material for the business. So uh, have we bought some land in this quarter? And if yes, uh, how much acre it would be? It is somewhere around 25 acre of land which has been bought during this quarter. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, got it. And so just one last question. This 23 acres that we have sold, it would be in uh, in the vicinity of the, uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, is it in the 
township or in the vicinity of the township where it could be located broadly you can uh okay uh you ask the question where, where are we buying it that's yeah yeah vicinity of township yeah. or it is it is you know at it's all places like vicinity of township there could be some other development uh and uh, our some future development which are seeing we will be buying land around that areas so this is not necessarily we, we are we are not looking at only certain pockets of land we are looking at land which is uh, available for future development growth from a projection perspective so we are not restrictive in that case we are quite open uh, in uh, we look at uh, we keep scouting around this right and and which area are we selling the 20 acres that we sold this is again largely the land parcel which we are not keeping it targeted for any potential development these are also the land which are there in the western part but not in our targeted development area okay okay got it sir okay thank you sir that is so much thank you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of krishna from ashika stock broking please go ahead hey. thank you for the opportunity i have one quick question uh, to understand the consumer or the customer mix that we have so how much percentage has been uh, booked by the end user or first time buyers versus uh, the investment purposes we have hardly hardly any investors in fact uh, mo- majority of the majority of the booking bulk of the booking is done by actual land users um, the best of for determining this is kind of uh, home loans we which are as a percentage of uh, your total booking which is very high in our case okay and what would be that percentage if you could just mention So almost ninety percent of the are uh, sale. They are backed by the home loan. Okay, got it. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yasmin Shah from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just wanted to ask you, what's your current land bank and uh, what amount, or you know, in terms of uh, probably acres? you don't want to kind of uh, explore the land bank in terms of development and which can be added to your sales of land in the coming years of the total land bank available see the total land bank we have been uh, holding and subsequently taken together is around somewhere around 555 acres and this keep on uh, i'm saying adding a reduction depending on what is the business activity and the targeted sale and purchase happening so as such there is no fixed policy where we are saying that this is the land which will keep it permanently or which will keep it purely for selling purpose it is largely how the development is happening all around the places as well as how the government is responding on different area how they want the development to take place in those area accordingly we take those decision and any plans to move out of andabar into any other city but at this point in time no there is no, uh, not immediately uh we will see if there is something which uh, comes up uh, we, we are not averse to that but we do believe that the opportunity which are being given in andabar is so good that it, i mean we are not yet lured into any other city with similar kind of uh, rocs right right and within andabar uh, i don't think you all do any jdas right not as of now but uh, we don't again we are not averse of that we are we are uh, quite open to that also but at this point in time we don't have a jv project uh, it might come up okay and lastly what was your uh, i think in the previous uh, quarter's call you had given some guidance in terms of uh, top line and bottom line growth for the next one or two years can i have that number again please See those number we have already given in terms of twenty to thirty percent growth in the bottom line. The top line we say that my uh, they might not be the certain number, but bottom line we are pretty sure that we will be targeting those areas. Right. Okay. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Jain from RK Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, thanks for the follow up. Uh, I just wanted to understand like uh, 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 it could be an accounting question and, uh, and 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 pardon my ignorance for this. So just wanted to understand uh, how much time lag is there between your pre-sales numbers and the reported numbers. I mean, uh, uh, as for the accounting standards, uh, uh, what is the norm here? If you can just help me. See, see, if you see in days 115 talks about you can book the revenue only when the project is completed, you got the occupancy certificate as well as sale date is happening. So, and generally if you take a timeline of three years period of time for a project to get completed, so your pre pre sales will get converted into the reported number after that DU number, and largely it depends on ki how the sales deals are happening, how the customers are responding. So over the next after the BU certificate, you get two to three quarters where the entire revenue of the project gets booked into the books. So and yes. this is what is happening in all last three four projects. What we are experiencing. Just to answer your question generally. Meaning there there could be time time gap of about uh, average time gap of about about one year to one and a half years for uh, pre booking to get convert reflect into revenue from project. But but your average projects will get completed in three years time. So I mean for a particular yeah. project it will get reflected in revenue numbers uh, after three years. You are saying for a yeah. particular project. Yes, yes. unless uh, unless we achieve. Uh, the closure much faster, like what we did in Exotica, uh, it was completed uh, well ahead of schedule. So if that happens, then the revenue comes in faster also, because uh, it, it like, all depends on the completion like, of the project. In case of Exotica, this project get uh, completed one year ahead of the schedule. So instead of fourth year, the revenue started recognizing in books in third year. Same is uh, with Malaba 3 also, the project get she completed well ahead of the schedule, so accordingly those revenue recognition gets pre code Okay, and you're saying as for the accounting norms, uh, this will be reorganized only on 100% completion, not even on certain milestones like 25% completion or... No, 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 that practice is no longer now... No, 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 not allowed. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Rutul Shah from Advisor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, thank you for the follow up. Uh, sir, as you just mentioned that this quarter we have bought uh, around 25 acres of land. So, just uh, can you let us know what is the total buy value of this new land? Sorry, could not get your question. No, no, we are yet to ascertain. Right, right now, we are not aware. 25 acres ka cost. Okay. Yeah. So we, shall, we shall give that out uh, the moment it's booked. So at this point in time, it's not ascertainable. Ascertainable is what uh, Rajendra Bhai just said. Uh, but we, we'll get it out in the coming months. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the last question for today. We have reached the end of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you everyone for the interest, uh, continuous interest being shown in Ganesh House and Numbers. Uh, I think we have been delivering on all the promises made uh, year on year and sometimes even better. Uh, we are hopeful that we will continue to do that in the times to come too and look forward to your interest being sustained just as our numbers have been sustained. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.